and welcome into the Section 109 podcast on a bright, sunny, beautiful day. Matthew, I'm Breezy. That's my co-host, Matthew. That's Bobble Juan, the goat. This is Sir Mix-a-Lot. Uh, my voice is still trashed from a lot of soccer in a short period of time. But Matthew, it is the best part of the year when the games come thick and fast and we are just seeing all the soccer possible, um, including the USA beat Mexico, Dos Acero. Shout out to the uh, the boys smashing Trulies, shotgunning Trulies in the locker room and taking them on set. Uh, the U.S. children are all right. But we're not here to talk about the U.S., Matthew. We are here to talk about two different games. A little recap a um, as, as we are normally doing, I would like to still do a, a vibe check to start this out. So, Matthew, on this beautiful, what day is today? Thursday? Thursday. On this beautiful Thursday, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Honestly, uh, you know, I think some people might have a sour taste in their mouth from the uh, the one one draw against New York City uh, on the road with the with the shootout loss, and I think those people are nuts. I feel the same way. I also think something that is going to be take some real getting used to is we didn't lose. The shootout just makes it feel like you lost. <laughs> the shootouts are horseshit. I'm not going to dwell on it. They are what they are. I think my official position now, having gone through a shootout win and a shootout loss is uh, the shootout doesn't matter. It can only be a little gravy on top. So, like, if you tie, if you draw a game, it's still a point. And if you happen to win the shootout, then Sorry. it's just a little extra gravy. Just a little gravy on top. That's it. That's all. I agree. It's also going to be really important because it's extra points. But, like, so, Matthew, you may know the numbers better than me. What are the percentage chances of penalties uh, and penalty shootouts? Uh, I mean, I think penalties go down officially. And if you're including, if you're including a penalty kick in expected goals, uh, it goes down as 0.79. So, 79 percent chance for each each individual penalty is a 79 percent chance of being converted. And then my understanding is, so that makes it, we'll call it 80%. I'm just going to make the math easy. Eight, penalties are an 80% chance. So between 75 and 80. Yeah. Depending on the league you're in. And then um, penalty shootouts are literally a toss-up. They're literally like a 50-50. Somebody did some sort of analysis at some point, and I think it was like 50-50 chance um, on winning a penalty shootout, a better team winning, et cetera, et cetera. Like they are a coin flip. That's why they're bullshit. That's why we shouldn't be using them to decide extra points on games. But if we're going to do it, like... I'm not going to try. I'm going to try my very best not to get wrapped up in it because there are very, 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 very few difference makers in penalty shootouts, um, meaning like guys who are difference makers in penalty shootouts and they're all goalkeepers. Yeah. And so I believe Jean Antoine has a chance to be that. Um, and then look, in, we've had two penalty shootouts this season in, um, in regular season play. And John Burke won the first one for us, and he set, he went the right way and sent one off the post. I know he didn't touch it, but it's my belief that guy adjusts just a little bit because John was going early, and like he knows that he's going the same way, right? So I'm giving John the credit for that one. Like you got to get one per penalty shootout, and like you got to have your teammates do the rest. But it's still a a crapshoot. So unless John Antoine and he told me uh, this is last year, if we get in a penalty shootout, I'm going to get at least two every time. Which is, by the way, if you hold up to that. My my guy, like it's gonna be unbelievable. Macy, I'm gonna get to finish putting his collar back on. Um, so anyway, my point is like there's very few difference makers in penalty shootouts. It has to be the keeper if it's gonna be. Tim Cruel was one. Um, Jan Sommer is absolutely one. Unbelievable. Um, Greg Hartley was back in the day, right? But there's very few players that are. So if we get lucky and either Jean or Michael Beretta or uh, John Burke are the difference maker in a penalty shootout. We could get some extra points this year. Outside of that, it's probably going to even out, honestly. Yes, no, that, that is my point. So I'm not getting wrapped up in it, at least right now. That's what I'm telling myself. Whatever happens to the penalty shootouts happens. What matters is we got out of our fourth game in 12 days um, with, with a point. But before we get to like analyzing that game a ton, uh, let's go back to the weekend. Okay. A little Cincinnati 2 action. A little um, Ohio sucks 
Um, a little Skyline Chili is dog shit Darby. Um, <laughs> just kidding. I just wanted to make, say the word uh, Darby and Skyline's Chili sucks. But I loved that game. For if you didn't somehow see it, it finished 3 nothing. Good, guys. Matthew, take us through how you were feeling, uh, maybe what the game looked like, and then, uh, yeah, let's just go through the game. So, you know, the Cincinnati game comes after... After the first, the stretch of, of two games where we we we, we drew Huntsville, uh, and won the shootout in in the MLS Next Pro opener, and you know the vibes are super super high. Uh, we're a bit fortunate to 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 get two points out of that out of that match. We're also a little for you know, unfortunate that we didn't take all three, um, just because soccer is a weird game sometimes. You know, we play the Open Cup game against Miami, and I think everyone knows that was a lackluster performance and yep, no, kind, of, well on kind of bombed it. So going into Cincinnati, uh, you know, with the league now, the only thing that matters, uh, what I wanted to see is is just a really good performance and, like, taking a, taking a step forward, building on what happened against Huntsville and putting what happened against Miami United behind us. So if we rewind for a second, when you when we were looking at these first four games... I think we said it on the podcast, but if we didn't, you and I were both agreed that we had one must-win game, and that was Miami. The other, and that's a bummer we didn't. Don't want to dwell on it. The other three, though, we just wanted to collect some points, but we just needed to get through, hopefully without three losses, genuinely. Yeah. Because we needed our second preseason. We were down six starters in game one. We were down five starters in game two. Like... I think that's right. Anyway, regardless, maybe it was three star actually three starters in game two because in the regular season because Miami we anyway. Point being is we were down starters. We were not who we're gonna be. Guys haven't spent time in camp together. We don't have Jude Arthur yet. So you and I, you can correct me if you don't think that this is an accurate representation of how we were feeling, but we're like, let's get out of these three games with if we get three draws, like we'll probably be excited, right? Uh I know that's a logical thing, not an emotional thing. <laughs> but now looking back, it's like we're looking at these games. And so like Cincinnati, like that is a great, great win. Huntsville is a very good draw. The the two points against Huntsville, uh, partly because of like shootout and vibes and whatever, but partly because two points on the board, like as, as massive. So with Cincinnati, you know what, what I wanted to see going into that game was like just a, a big response. Like, can we, can we do some things? Are we Miami or are we Huntsville? Right. And, and and I think, I think the lineup said it all, honestly, because, uh, you know, Jesse Williams is on international duty at this time uh, with Trinidad and Tobago, so uh, we got a little bit of an interesting wrinkle in Milo Garvanian starting at right. That back. was so unexpected. Um, yeah, and it worked out. I thought he played well, out, but I was just worked out great. Uh, what? You know, totally, totally stays in. Uh, Duvan Viafara makes his first makes his first start. Um, and, and, and Farid came in, uh, with, when Duvan had cramps, like 87th minute, something like that. Um, you know, Joseph Perez still at, at, at left back. Uh, we went back to the Huntsville starting lineup in midfield with Andres, Alex McGrath and Luis Garcia Sosa. Um, and then Jalen James got the start at, uh, at right wing, um, with, with Taylor Gray on the left and then Medi Omri getting his first start for CFC and, that was an interesting one, both because Jalen James recovering from from uh, concussion in preseason. So, you know, we figured, and and obviously with Jesus coming back uh, from his hamstring injury versus Birmingham, you know, I had I had wondered like how how that was going to be managed in mm-hmm. terms of Me minutes. Too. Um, and it turns out it was just forty five and forty five. And I don't know if that was pre planned. I don't know if that was a. I don't know either. We we don't know. It worked perfectly though. Right. But Medi's Medi's inclusion was interesting because you know we didn't That was shocking to we me. We didn't know. I didn't think there was any chance he started. I thought we were gonna get one more of Ethan Corrin. We didn't <laughs> I, I figured it would be Carlos since Carlos had gotten his I, ITC. Oh yeah, yeah. I was thinking earlier on in the week. Uh, I just was thought Carlos was never gonna get his ITC. <laughs> <laughs> but so so Medi went uh, let me let me look this up. Medi went 27 minutes versus Miami, and and there's some stoppage time that adds adds on to this. And he went 11 minutes plus stoppage against. Yeah, Huntsville. so I thought there was no chance he was starting. Right, or it was going to be like a 45 and 45 situation. And yeah, I just figured if he was going to come in, it'd be in the 45th minute if we were lucky. Yeah, and turns out like the plan was you know 65. Yeah, actually the plan was 70. 
Okay, it was 70. So and then he asked I, for five more, and then he got the gold, and they immediately yes. subbed him. Okay. Yeah, so that's I'll, I'll tell that story real quick. We were talking to, to Richard, and I apologize, Richard. I don't believe this was said in confidence. Um, if it was, deepest apologies. But he, we was a group of us at, after the game. We're like, man, Medi, like got that goal, whatever else. That was a sweet goal. And he goes, yeah, you know, I, I can't remember. Somebody said maybe it said something about a minute's limit. And he said, yeah, he was on a minute's limit. We were just going to go for X number of minutes. And he said, like, just give me five more, just give me five more, just give me five more. And he scored with his last touch because he got those five minutes and he scored the very last one. So I guess he was right. It worked out, (laughs) Um, which just made me uh, it made me smile. It's also just a great story. And it was a wonderful way to put a bow on Medi's first start for CFC. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in both of the first two games, you could tell when he when he subbed on that he just brings something completely different to not only the group this year but also to the forward position that we've just not had in a long time. Yeah, we haven't had a 24-year-old athletic forward in since the MPSL days. Since, since Chris O'Chang. Um Yeah, since the MPSL. I mean, like, Luke Winter was not the same kind of forward. I would argue they were definitely different, but Will Roberts had some of the same things. The run really hard, get in behind, get on the shoulder like, it's, type it's of o- thing. It's O-Ching, baby. Look, but Oching's just further back than that, so I'm just trying to think of somebody between Oching and here. <laughs> um, Oching didn't play his last season in 2015 or 2016. Yeah, it was one of those. 2015. Yeah. Uh, 2015. He didn't come back in 2016, I don't think. So, like, um, yeah, it's just been a long time since we've had the this profile of of like athlete. Guy who can run in behind, guy who can hold up things. Um, I mean, like, look, Danny Whitehall didn't hold up the ball like this. Um, well, at least effectively. And Luke Winter was not this type of player. He had moments of it, but he was not an athlete. He didn't get out on the run. Um, uh, I would, Max Wilshere had some of these same characteristics, but he definitely didn't do it. Um, and certainly not the hold up play. Right, but he did have the he had the run on the back shoulder thing, so he didn't have the combo. So this is just a very different type of player than we've seen. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say he's a clearly better player than we've had or whatever else. He's just a very different player, and I'm yeah, I'm I'm super enthused. I looked over at you last night during the game, and I said I love this guy. Um, it's early, but like I, the the combination of skills and and like profile of guy really fits what Rod wants to do, and of course it does. Rod's very smart. But I didn't see it in highlights because there aren't any because he played in the sec- he was wallowing in the second division in like four different leagues. So yeah, I am just I'm enjoying it so far. So I think the the, the first half of Cincinnati we're 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 the better team, but something interesting is going on in this game, uh, and this does not happen very often. Cincinnati outpossesses us. I'm still not sure that's true. By the way, well. Look, Fat Mob. Well, we're gonna pretend it's true because Fat Mob said it was. Uh, I find it. Yeah, it, it just it's hard. It didn't. That it's not it wasn't my feeling. I felt like it was even in the first half and we were better in the second half. Um, turns out that that was not the case. According Fat to Fat Mob, Mob, gets their which data by the way, how much fucking fun is MLS it? MLS Next Pro. How much fucking fun is it to have real data? Oh, it's so good, man. Like I, even if it's potentially wrong, which it seems to be pretty decent, but like even if it's potentially wrong, this is the most non Nisa thing ever. The most like we have actual data. We had expected goals. Yeah, so the expected goals thing. Yeah, please explain that to me because it did wasn't labeled as expected goals. Yeah, so number one, I am still waiting on actual expected goals data on the MLS Next Pro website. That is something that's supposed to happen. We've kind of heard from the grapevine that there's there's something wrong in on the back end computer, uh, so we don't have any any actual data yet. However, there's this group called American Soccer Analysis that since 2018 came up mm. with a an expected possession uh expected possession goals or whatever and their their calculation method i sent you the article this morning to read i did not read it their their calculation is basically they've they've assigned a position on the uh, a value to every single position on the field and i don't mean like right back center back i mean like these different like squares oh, the quadrants on the, yeah yeah but it's like it's like subdivided and subdivided and oh, so if you if you are in possession of the ball in certain parts of the field, interesting, it's assigned a uh, expected possession goal for like what is the likelihood that possession in this area will lead to a goal? Interesting. And and so like if it's like the center backs passing the ball back and forth to one another at the top of the eighteen, there's no like you're not getting value for that, uh, because that that's just not incredibly likely to lead to a goal. No, totally. But if you have possession of the ball at, say, the penalty spot inside the box, 
like, yeah, that that very much might lead to a goal. It's like your your value is going to be higher there. So uh, it's this thing called game flow. Uh, they used to have a kind of a Twitter bot uh, that the, would just rip the data from wherever the data gets ripped from, like Opta or whatever. And then they would come up with these graphs because they're trying to show like momentum and in, in, in possession. Uh, and so there's something related to the offensive, uh, the offensive XPG, and then there's the defensive portion as well. So that if you are a a team that is all about possession and doing something with possession, it'll show there. And if you're more of a team that is all about like the counterattack, you might get showed up in in more of the defensive uh, XPG or whatever. That's my rough explanation of that. Okay. But it's called Game Flow. It's on Blue Sky. It's on Mastodon. They update. They haven't updated last night's games yet. I looked, but it's uh, so so. It's twi- not they're Twitter haters. It, well, no, the Twitter was going to try to charge them for being a a botish. They hate Twitter. I got it. Yeah, they hate Elon. Uh, I'm just. I'm not. On, this is a guy who's not on Twitter. So t- take my jokes as they are. So like, it's not. It's not like an actual like like to like XG type thing. But it's interesting because that's that's additional data. Um, and I, I just love, I just love having access to the stuff. So like it, this says, and I think this is a perfect, like the first, this is first half Cincinnati. We had 45% possession compared to 55% for Cincinnati, but what was that? Um, but we had seven total shots to their two. And one of those was a big chance. That's the Alex McGrath off the corner. They had 55. We had 45. Yeah. Yeah, 241 accurate passes for Cincinnati. We had 188. But we created, you know, we took seven shots. You know, four of those were off target. One of those was on target. That was McGrath. We had two of them blocked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I am. I am. Th- and, and like six shots inside the box. I am s- thrilled is a little too strong, but I was happy with how we played in the first half against FC Cincinnati. Yeah. It, I, we, so I, I came out of that game saying, like, since he's pretty good. So one of the things I remember from having rod on after the season and he talked about you know changing the profile of some positions like we need to get better in certain areas like we need to be able to generate more shots more chances like we just we just didn't do that enough in nisa and and he's not he would talk about how we want we want to have you know nine shots inside the box yeah one of his kpis one of the kpis is nine and we were we were averaging like six in nisa we had six in the first half against Cincinnati. Yes, two of them were blocked. A couple of them were... Well, so they're, yeah, they're going to get blocked. Yeah, Right. Yeah, that, that, that happens sometimes. And what I don't know is, is that like six shots that get off inside the box that are not blocked? Right. I, it, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know either. But I'll add, we had in, um, in uh, the second half against Cincinnati, we had four shots inside the box. So like we finished with 10. Mm-hmm. Two of those were goals. And obviously, Jesus Abar is magnificent Travella, uh, which which kind of broke the game open in roughly the kind 60th of. minute. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it, it was fucking unbelievable. So yeah, 60th minute, Abara does the Travella thing. Uh, and we were getting into good good, Un- good positions all night. believable I think as as evidenced by the shots inside the box. And Medi hit the bar in the first half, or the post in the first half. The way Medi like, brought that ball down and then turned and fired. Mm. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, so, so... Uh, Abara scores in about the 60th minute. Let's talk a little bit about that goal. So he, it comes out of nothing, essentially. Like, he dribbles in. Yeah, he's got a little bit of, uh, like, it isn't like a passing sequence. A lot of our goals are team goals. They're passing sequences, and that's, like, wonderful. Cutbacks in the box, we know, are the highest yeah. XG things. But sometimes you just need a winger to beat somebody. And a lot of times in our offense, a winger, when we're playing well, a winger beats somebody that destabilizes the defense, and then we do something to score, right? And this is no shade against how we were playing because we I, we were doing that some. Uh, Taylor got several shots off in the box by beating a winger. Um, mm-hmm. Like it, we, there's progress there, but Ibarra just goes. I'm going to beat somebody, and then when he doesn't fully close me down because I'm right-footed, I really think the guy's shading because he's afraid that he's going to yeah. like, drive to that the end line. So he's shading him, and instead of like coming across his left foot, which maybe the guy can get there with his, to block it, he just travellas it with his lead right foot as he's going, as I'm demonstrating for the camera, trying to travella. And like it can't be a better finish. Like it, 
not only is it an amazing shot, like it's in the edge of it's almost in the top corner. That thing it's, that thing is basically top beds. It is it is as, almost as high as you can go, not quite. And then it is in the side netting. It like slides in the side if netting you put, as it goes by. If you put a, a little garbage can in the upper ninety slot of the goal, it, go, it goes in. There. That thing goes in. For extra points. If, and by the way, it won goal of the week for good fucking reason. Yeah. It could have won good goal of the week without the rest of us seeing it or without and, and voting for it. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And and honestly, like it, it's a it's actually a really fun moment because he didn't necessarily beat anybody. What he did is he just started driving and the defender was dropping and he just kind of like shimmied his hips to go inside and like and so he, he created a gap out of it without necessarily like beating somebody and going by them. So I would I would argue he did beat yes, he didn't go by them, but he has a chance to pass it there if there's a runner. Or he he creates just enough space by doing the shimmy. And you know, Jesus, like three quarters of what he does, no shade here, this is like a, a compliment, is with his hips, right? He's so like he'll send a guy one way by by positioning his hips, then he'll send another guy and then he'll go by them. Like he's just very, very tricky. You never know which way he's gonna go. And he has a little bit of that on that. But like he does beat that guy, like he just doesn't go by him because he chooses to shoot. But like he's also centered up or or in a position where he could pass it if there's a if there's a runner there. Like it's just, it's such good wing play. It's an unbelievable goal, and like from there that causes them to open up even more. And once they open up more, we get those uh, second two goals, including Jesus' second goal. Yeah. So, the. The first, these first two goals in this game actually come about in sort of a similar way. Uh, both of them begin with uh, Andres Jimenez Aranzazu in the middle of the field playing uh, kind of a square ball into uh, the first time, the first goal, uh, the the Travella, it's to Luis Garcia Sosa, who plays the ball in kind of diagonally and forward towards Jesus Zabara. The second one is uh, Aaron Zazu like absorbing like three players of pressure, slipping a ball square out to Alex McGrath, who drives forward and then gives it to Abara to do the finish. Uh, but it, it's just one of those things where you, you see this with the center back sometimes about how like they'll pass the ball back and forth and they're just trying to like bring the defense yep. a little bit forward, a little bit closed in, and then you have to have the technical quality to be able to slip a ball out and get somebody in some space to go. And that's what happens here with, with Aaron Zazu both times. He's a, like the defense kind of closes in centrally. He's able to slip the ball out into a midfielder with space. And then that player can, can use the pass or use the dribble and then the pass to advance the ball forward. And then it just becomes a bar versus a defender. And he's just in so, for the second goal. He's just in such a good position upon receiving the ball. There's nothing left to do, but just shoot. And I mean, bang on the second one. Yeah. Yeah. So, bang. <clears throat> something that I think is also happening is like, we're seeing guys get used to playing with each other. In those first two games I'd have to go back and watch, but uh, it didn't feel like we were getting that same, like they collapse on me. I dumped the ball off and I mean, or I passed the ball or I moved like the drawing in, like we had a bunch of turnovers in the midfield against Huntsville. Yeah. Um, and like that caused us some, some consternation and some harm. Um, at moments, but also like we were decent against Huntsville and then against Miami. Like we didn't get that chance in part because they didn't really press us. And when they did, they were up a goal. And so we just, we weren't as sharp, et cetera, et cetera. This game though, you saw like, I think a little bit more chemistry. And so like that draw in happened with Andres, like he would draw in players and then you had the player showing and him knowing they were showing and you just had much, much better, more dangerous play out of the midfield which just shows like the guys are finally getting some minutes together and getting yeah. a chance to like develop. And we're early. It's early to evaluate this deeply, um, but it's good. Yeah. The third goal uh, is just like good pressure from uh, Taylor, from Taylor and, and everybody. Cause they're, it, it's, it's we're pressing, but yeah. like Taylor's the one who steps and gets the ball and, and like defender, the, the outside center back just has a bad touch and, and Taylor is on him quick and just, jumps it and takes the ball and drives in, in the right direction as well. And, and Medi Omri, who's behind the play, uh, just gets on his horse. Who is ready to be subbed. Yeah. Who needs to be well, subbed. Not, he, he's not ready. Sorry. He was, we were preparing to sub him. He was clearly not ready. That, that guy was, that, that guy, guy was, was done ready to score. Minutes ago. 
But no, he was ready to score, but baby. He gets on his horse, you know, gets around the outside. Taylor, Taylor, you know, drops the ball off for him. Uh, and and he great freaking finish for his first goal. It is a great and, finish because the, the pass is like just a little five percent too far. So he has to take like a little extra little touch. The goalkeeper's coming out, but he just like the the thing the strikers do. We saw Marcus do it a million times. Like in the box, if you are if you're in the right place in the like you you have the chance to finish, and like he finishes in the perfect spot, and it's uh, three nothing. You could see how much it meant to him. Big celebrations. Um, Love seeing Jean come off the off the bench to to like pick him up, basically like on the uh, on the big collapse together. Like it was good. Yeah, that, and the vibes were high. And one thing that like Cincinnati, so they played a three man back line, and I felt like in that first half they really gave us trouble. We were pressing them, and yes, we turned them over a few times, but like they chipped it out to the wingbacks quite a bit or, or passed out to the wingbacks from the center backs or from the deep-lying midfielders, and, or, and they got them out to the wing. And when they got out to the wing, a lot of times they had some time and space, and then there was a bad touch, or we closed down, and then the next pass was a bad touch. But like they, there's a world in which we are in a bad place because they were able to play through us in that first half a bit yeah. um, because those wingbacks were in a very different place than we're normally. I think we normally play against. But in the second half, you really saw us isolate those center backs because it was wingers going against the center back instead of wingers going against an outside back with a center back helping. And you see Ibarra beat his center back. You see uh, Omri be splitting the center backs. Medi splitting on the Taylor where where there's, you know, again, you're going in center backs and there's not an extra outside back helping. And even on the on Jesus's um, where the, it's cross back cross, like there's just there's less players in the box than there should be potentially should be, quote unquote. And I think. We there was a double edged sword with how Cincy chose to play against us, and it went our way. I hope as the season goes on, we continue to tighten up some of those things, because if if those teams get better in possession and we don't press more effectively, we could have been down one nothing because they could have got numbers forward in the front half in the in the first half. I there's a long way to go. This is the rod test. I'm not worried. I'm just pointing out that there's a there's a long way to go before our press is excellent. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. So that pretty much puts a bow on the Cincinnati game. Um, and clean sheet. Our sheets are clean. Clean sheet, indeed. And that was really nice to see. Uh, this league has... Tolly totally was an absolute brick wall. Absolutely. We were We were good overall defensively, and John was great. And you know we everybody gets credit for it, but man, was totally a fucking brick wall. This, this league has uh, teams that can pull... Individual players that could just pull something out of their hat. We saw it against Huntsville and back heel finish. Everybody and everybody's got it. So I mean, keeping clean sheets is is going to be hard, much harder than it was in Nisa because the overall like finishing and attacking talent is just so much higher. Yes. Uh, So even though it's younger, it's so much higher. So much higher. So each clean sheet is is something to be celebrated. uh, In in all in all honestly. Um, so let's move on to, to the last night's game, New York City. First away game of the season F- on short rest, four games in twelve or four games in twelve days. Um, how are you feeling going in? How are you feeling in the middle? How are you feeling at the end? So getting the win against Cincinnati put us at five points in the league, and considering you know I was kind of just really hoping for us to to get three from this first set of three games. Um. I figured that number one, a road game, short like like not just short rest, but like cascading short rest, uh, with with four games in twelve days. Uh, New York City had ha- hadn't played since the Open Cup uh, match against Motown, so they were pretty fresh. Um, I was just you know, pretty much anything honestly was going to be gravy like it was going to be great for me. Like any any points in this game would be great, and I wasn't even going to be concerned that concerned about a loss, um, just because you know we we are where we were. So the and, lineup comes out. Uh, Jonathan Burks in goal again. Uh, Jesse Williams is back in the lineup, uh, fresh from international duty. Uh, I think he got back on Sunday and then flew out with the team on Monday. So I had two two training sessions. Um. A regular one on Monday, and then a uh, in uh, the the pre match one on Tuesday. Anatoly and Duvan Viafara as your center backs. Milo so, Garvanian uh, moves to his third position in three games at at left back. I was surprised to see Duvan start because he went out with cramps. Um, 
I, I'm not. I didn't think he was hurt. I just thought you might see Fareed because it was a it was short rest. Um, but good on Duvon, and he played 90 minutes. Uh, Andres, Alex, and Luis again in midfield. No surprises there. Uh, Jesus Sabara gets the start. Uh, no surprise there. After after two goals against Cincinnati in the second half, I would I would expected nothing less. Uh, Taylor Gray uh, at left wing, and then Medi Omri back at back at striker, and you know this game. This game is a tale of two halves, and and really it's a tale of a first half, a second half for most of the half, and 30, then we 30 make, minutes, and then we make changes. It's forty five to seventy five. Yeah, it's and, it's one to forty five, and you could break it up a little bit more, but easy to say one to forty five, forty five to seventy five. Yeah, seventy five to ninety. Yeah, I think I think so. So let's, let's talk about those uh, those portions. We were so like we get an early goal. Uh, just like straight off the bat, like eighth minute, you know, Taylor Gray, uh, uh, Andres plays a, a lovely ball over the top and in, in behind a Taylor mm-hmm. Gray, uh, whose first finish first time, which was a great decision to take it first time is saved by the goalkeeper. Uh, but it's in the air. And so Taylor is able to like take the rebound. Off Taylor his scored head. a header. Not his first one. Might as well be. <laughs> that guy scores with his feet, man. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't score many headers. So he, he's able to knock the thing in, uh, and we take an early 1-0 lead. Uh, By the way, time time one second. First of all, we are on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, shout out, thank you. The likes, reviews, etc., are and, and subscriptions are wonderful, and um, thank you. Secondly, you can click over from this game or from this podcast and watch the 90 minutes in 15. You can watch 15 minutes of highlights from this game. So on YouTube... All of our games are going to be, as far as we can tell, available, not as full replays, but as 15-minute, roughly, highlight packages. So if you want to see this game and you didn't get a chance to look, watch it last night, there's no way to watch a full replay, but jump on YouTube from where we are now and check it out because I think it will be it will tell you a lot, um, a, more, a lot more than a four-minute highlight package will be. Continue. Yeah. Um, what stands out in this first half? Uh, we have... Both teams have four shots. Uh, we have two big chances listed. I kind of think that's the Taylor Gray shot that was saved and then the finish because one of those was listed as missed, missed. And I wouldn't give big chance to anything else in that game or in that half. Um, but no, this was interesting. Uh, 58% possession in the first half for, for CFC. Honestly, didn't feel like it. It really didn't. But so like, it's like the opposite of, of 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 FC Cincinnati, where it's like I didn't feel like we got dominated. I felt like they had some good moments. They were good and talented. I just felt like it was. I thought it I, was, if you flipped those two, if you told me in the Huntsville game or in the um, Cincinnati game we had more possession, in this one we had less possession, I would have felt like that was the the proper read. And instead, it was the opposite. So I think the first thirty minutes were pretty even, and then we put our foot on the ball for about ten minutes there, from about thirty to forty, and just just controlled the game. And you're right over there. Yeah, I'm dying. Um, and I think that was that was really good because we were, we were probing, but we were never out of control with it. And it just allowed us to, to keep just kind of keep possession, not necessarily waves of pressure, but we were we were able just to keep possession, keep New York off of the ball. Uh, and as we saw in the second half, they have tons of skillful players that can really do some stuff, do some damage with the ball if they have it. Yeah, and, 20, 29 had me terrified all game. And I and we moved. This was a really good half for us. I think we also like. I, I think we come out in the second half and we're we're just gassed, man. Right? Yeah. Like F- fourth game in twelve days, guys are already on minutes restrictions up until now. Like we were just we endured waves. So forty five to seventy five, we endured waves of pressure of pressure, including them scoring a goal, well deserved. Probably could have got another one. Um, they had 15 shots in the second half. They were very good. It was very discouraging live on rewatch. It was a little bit less. Um, also, the more I think the reason is less discouraging for me. So I'll, I'll say my little piece about this, this little period of time. We were clearly gassed. I was worried we were getting talent rolled at the time, meaning, boy, these young kids are talented. Look how they've turned up the hit the pedal. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like this. I mean, it, they, they started three 16 year olds. Uh, a 17 year old, two 18 year olds, and a couple of 22 year olds, and a couple 21 year olds. So, 
I, I, I was, yeah, I was worried about how that going into the game. I thought, oh, these young kids, like we'll, we'll demolish them. And I think you saw a portion of that in the first half, meaning like they had some talented moments, but like we were the better team overall yeah. in the first half. Yeah. And then in the second half, they just steamrolled us until 75. But what happened at 75 is we made three changes. We did make a change before that. Uh, JP came in that, that solidified things just a little bit. I think Jesse was very clearly gassed. Um, and like he had Milo switches to right back and, and Jesse had been on international duty since totally Huntsville, so. totally totally uh, he's been flying all over the country he hasn't had training sessions is no shade um, but Milo goes to right back Jesse goes to left back or yeah Milo and then um, Jesse goes out and JP goes to left back that helped a little bit but still it was waves of pressure and then 75th minute we make three changes Callum comes in for Luis uh, Carlos comes in for Medi and Jalen comes in for Jesus mm-hmm. three sets of fresh legs at 75, and then suddenly we were back, foot on the gas from 75 to 90. We dominated. They were on the back foot. They were wasting time. It was the exact opposite of what happened 45 to 75. Yeah. The two things that happened, I think, in that period, they blew their load early. Yeah. They pressed, pressed, pressed um, offensively. They got there, even defensively too. They got us turned over. They got their goal. Could have had another one. John makes some good saves. We made some good defensive moments. but we And we bend and don't break. Well, except for the one goal. And then once we get the three f- fresh legged subs, we are suddenly momentum, right back in the ascendancy. Momentum flipped. And we, so that was, that changed my mind though, because I, that, that little worry that I had like, oh boy, what if these kids are just so talented across the league? It's a new league, whatever. That wasn't what happened. What happened is, yes, they were talented, but we were fucking gassed after four, four games in 12 days. And when that when that became abundantly clear, as soon as we put in those subs, we just turned it on, and we were the better team again. That gives me hope. That makes me happy. That also changes my analysis of that period of time. From oh my goodness, these kids are so good. What are we doing? To oh yeah, we were definitely were gassed. It seemed like we were gassed. That was what happened. We ended up blocking. So I mentioned they had 15 shots in the second half, right? <sighs> Too fucking many. Uh, nine shots inside the box in the second half for New York. Six of them were outside the box. Not great, Bob. We blocked seven shots in that second half. I think Anatoly had about four of them. Probably. Uh, but, it, but it just goes to show like the, the stat about big chances. Yeah. They didn't have a big chance all night. Like, and, and like they had some big, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the crazy I, thing. So I think that's camera. I, I, I think that's, I think that's camera angle. That's camera angle because that ball is off the deflection. It's a, it's a block. It falls to a guy. He hits it again. It takes a deflection and goes in. But like that's a big chance. That ball is like eight yards out, nine yards out. Like there, there is there is something in that, the in the data that I don't know what is sure. for how they classify a big chance. And I I wonder if it's essentially no traffic. Maybe like like a shot inside the box with absolutely no traffic or, or very little traffic. Yeah. So because uh, like because like that their goal. And a couple of those are like just full on, like in the middle of traffic. Yes. Uh, and a ball comes flying. You know, also, flying how do you not call timeout? How do you not call the curler in the first half? Do they have a big chance in the first half? Mm. So that's wild because they had that one where they, they had two moments of danger in the first half that were very dangerous. One of which was like a guy got, got the ball in the box, shifted the ball to his right leg. Uh, John, yeah, that's true. That should be a big John chance. Burke dives and like if that ball's low, it's saved. But he goes high, it goes over and out. But it's really good skill. You and I looked at each other and we were like, God, wow, that's good. But that's that. It's also traffic though. So I, I just right, wonder right. if that's what, a, I'm, what I'm saying is like that's if that you're. I, I'm agreeing with you. I just think yeah, that that's mischaracterization of that chance. That's a big chance in the first half too. Um, I I am not upset with how we defended overall. I think we were just gassed. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think once those subs came in, both some fresh legs up front and Carlos, one on the wing. In, Carlos and, and Jalen. But also Callum's running in midfield. Those three players immediately just brought energy. They were able to actually challenge. Uh, and the guys before were running, but it was they were a half second late. And they were able to show. Or they were by themselves and they, they were isolated or whatever. Like those three guys just were like, all right, we're fresh. And like just turning the game on its head. Able to able to show in possession to be an option there. Able to, to more effectively win the ball back yes. when we didn't have it. Like it was... It was it was real progress, and we got several chances there at the end. To listen, that that's a game where, you know, we could have we could have given up a couple of goals and been out of it, and also we could have stolen stolen the win towards the end there. Now that Alex chance goes just wide, yeah, and that's and then the subs happened, and then it really kicked off from yes. there. Um, 
And we had a couple more, couple more. I mean, Carlos had like two shots in the first like two minutes of, mm-hmm. of his his involvement. Uh, so the game finishes one one. We go into a shootout. Uh, the first couple, the first couple are made. Uh, uh, a New York City player misses misses the target, then totally misses the target. A couple more are made, uh, and then uh, Callum Watson is saved, uh, and then New York City converts uh, their their last one to uh, to win officially four two. Well, they don't officially win. That's not how this works. To win the shootout, yeah. excuse me. And, also, aren't and you the one who always aren't you an the extra one always, point? You're the one who always yells at me. It's a draw. They advance on penalties. Correct, but this is not an advancing situation. This is an. Uh, it's just an a earning, draw, earning an extra point. Win, winning the shootout is earning an extra point. They didn't win shit. They they won the shootout. They got lucky. <laughs> well, yes, because all shootouts are luck. Because they're crap shoots. So uh, we're at 43 minutes here, Matthew. Um, I think we should work on on wrapping this up. But I know you have some stats, so let's blow through those real quick. And then I have some takeaways. Um, I don't know if you have some takeaways as well. Um, I'll, I'll just go through this r- real quick. I think it's... I'm, first off, I'm shocked that we did two game re- reviews like that in 43 minutes. It's not bad. We're, it's incredible, honestly. Yeah. Um, so a little a little snapshot here. Three games in. Uh, these are league stats. We will just pretend that Miami never happened. Uh, cool. <laughs> we're three games in. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Medi's got you know one goal. Uh, Taylor Gray has two goals and an assist. Uh, McGrath's got a goal and assist. Uh, Jesus Bar has got got two goals from that Cincinnati game. Logan Brown's got an assist. Yeah, he does. Beautiful ball played over the and, top. Uh, and and. Luis Garcia Sosa has an assist. Uh, and then there are a few hockey assists scattered through there. One from Anatoly, two from um, Andres, and one from Medi for earning the penalty versus Huntsville. Um, so that's really, really nice to see. Uh, the, the only thing I, I want to shout out on, on these stats for the, these first three games, uh, Taylor Gray, three goal involvements in... Um, Taylor Gray, three goal involvements in in three games, two goals and assist. Uh, coming off of last year's season, where he was, uh, where he was out for 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 so many months, uh, you know, and like going up a level. Really, really nice to see him get some tangible return. I mean, he's played. He's also played well. Like he's created chances. He's gotten high leverage moments. It, he's got a bunch of shots in the box. Like. His underlying stats are going to be pretty good here, but it's really nice to also see like the ball hit the back of the net twice yep. to get an assist, uh, especially from a pressy turnover and then assist. Like really, really nice to see uh, some some tangible product uh, on the stat sheet for him starting the season. Uh, that's very, very good. It, it just feels like he, he he's begun where he left off. Yep, uh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, okay, you want to do some. You want to do some some thoughts here? I do. So I want to remind folks, here's my first takeaway is how I'm thinking of it. Um, second preseason starts now, two and a half weeks off. Um, we don't have Jude Arthur. We have everybody else in camp. Um, John Antoine's looks like he's on his way back. So we should have everybody in theory. Um, Min Jay's not back yet from injury, but we have all of our, what I would call projected starters, except for Jude Arthur in camp and working on stuff. Hopefully Jude is here soon. This two and a half weeks is massive for um, understanding fitness and like just like betting in. And we didn't get that full preseason. Hopefully, there's changes to that um, in the future, and we get a lot of those, you know, players in earlier. But we didn't have them, so here we are. This is a, this two and a half week break could not come at a better time. Here's to hoping everybody gets healthy. Everybody gets fit and also everybody starts to gel because the next few games are when we should start seeing not our finished product, but what we would have hoped, I think, to see coming in out of the preseason and into a regular season. That's my first takeaway. Um, Second, the midfield is now thin. Now that we've started getting players back um, at positions, we've got some players and bodies at, at wing. We've got some bodies up front that we didn't have. You know, we're no longer starting Ethan and Milo up top. Um, center back, we've got some depth there. Like the, the level of play has been high. Outside back, same thing. Um, but now, and I'm not saying the level of play hasn't been high, but we are one either injury or um, 
whatever away from the only having basically three midfielders. Um, Callum is not yet full, either not yet fully fit or not yet fully bedded in. Um, the three guys are playing that are Luis, Andres, and uh, Alex are playing a lot of minutes. So what I I am not like stressing super hard now, but Jude Arthur is very, very key to the success of this team in the medium term now, because as we get all of our bodies back and we looked where are our quote unquote weak spots, like we are thin in midfield right now. And so I cannot wait to Jude, for Jude to get here. Um, it also, Jude gives us uh, flexibility everywhere because it moves somebody Andres right now out of that holding spot and allows Andres to be a backup at holding spot. It allows him to start potentially one of the eights or tens. Um, it just changes everything. So, Jude cannot get here fast enough. The midfield is thin. I'm not freaking out, but that is like kind of the next thing I'm watching is when does Jude get here and how fast do we get him uh, integrated and ready? Um, because that is is where our, kind of our weak spot, quote unquote, is on the depth pers- from the depth perspective. Um, and number three, the kids across this league are real talented. <laughs> uh, something I told you, I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I watched every 90 and 15 from the first week. I watched probably about half of them for the second week. I need to go back and rewatch a few more. Um, one thing I have noticed is the level of finishing, the level of like, holy shit, a big crazy thing just happened uh, that came out of nothing. What an unbelievable touch and play. I mean, we saw it in the first game, the Huntsville, the back heel, first time finish. Like, there's just a lot of talent in this league, not necessarily that have like a fully developed player, but moments of brilliance. Um, that's impressive. That's fun. These teams are not bunkering in for the most part um, across the league. And we are an older team, older, quote unquote, than a lot of the teams here. We have some high level pros. We also have a lot of experience. We're going to need to do something very different from what we've done in the past, I think, with Rod and not just play great pretty soccer, which we're going to do, not just be dominant by like creating a lot. We're also going to be dominant by killing off games and keeping these kids from ever having hope because now these kids have some excellent talent to back up their hope. And what did Rod say in like our very first time? You have to kill hope. You can't let them have ever have hope. I think that's even more key now in this league where they can pull something literally out of their asses and do something wild. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited from where we are. I'm excited for for what's to come. And those are kind of my three um, key takeaways from these last two games. My first one is uh, we're on six points. We're six points out of nine. That's two points per game. That is Excellent, excellent, excellent for what we we feared. It, it, I I cannot stress how like much it could have been worse. Also, if you get two points a game for the rest of the season, you will be easily in the playoffs. Not only easily in the playoffs. Uh, if you look at 2022 and 2023 MLS Next Pro standings in these oh, conference, let's go, let's go. Uh, I would. I didn't know if you had this two points per game uh, average over the course of the season. That includes the the penalty. The, the penalty shootouts or whatever would put this team in second place in the Eastern conference in both, in both seasons, two points a game was enough. That's wild because there should be extra points for every game, extra points available because there's, uh, there's three points available in every game win or draw. So I think, I think what will end up happening is uh, there, there are a bunch of, there are a bunch of draws out there, but there's a bunch of parody as well. Like it's not like like MLS parody or whatever that's like planned, but it's just like the ebbs and flows of a season. Yeah. These these teams all have players that can beat you on any given night. And sometimes they beat you on any given night. And I think that just like compresses the number of available three points and no points down. Uh, as opposed to, you, you know, you end up with a little bit more draws, which means it's more two and ones. So everybody gets a little something out of it and they're, and they're fewer, like at the top end, like crown legacy had 66 points last year, two points per game in a 28 game season is 56, which new England two was on for second place. And then it went by the way, 54, 51, 46 in three, four and five. So. You know, it's possible that there's just one team that's better than everybody else that can run away with with more than two points per game because they're usually winning or they're usually, you know, winning a shootout, for example. Uh, like Columbus grew two in 2022, which was also the year they won MLS Next Pro, both the Eastern Conference and the, and the playoffs. 
were on 55 points in 24 games. Two points per game is 48 there. They lost three times that year. They went 16, 5, and 3. Uh, and I don't know what happened. I'm not going to do the math on the on the shootout or whatever. But, like, you know, that's real good. Uh, Crown Legacy last year. You know, I don't know if they're the same team this year because they've graduated a couple players to, to the first team. And maybe they got a little bit younger. And, and, and they got rid of a guy who was real, real productive to them. He's now at Chicago Fire, too. But they went... 28 games, Crown Legacy went 19 wins, 5 draws, and 4 losses. You said 66 points? And they were at 66 points. How many games? 28. So that's 2.35, and the uh, and it was 56 points for Columbus in the first, the year before? It was 56, no, 55 points in 24 games. So that is 2.29 for Columbus and 2.35. So call it four. So two two points a game is not going to be enough to win the league pretty clearly unless like there's a real aberration. And, and, unless there's like some serious, a little bit more parity going on. But I feel good about my prediction that two points a game, it's way early, guys. We can't look at the table yet. But two points a game, if that does continue, if we can keep that up somehow, like that is playoff. That is clearly, oh, it, it clear, easily clearly in the playoffs. playoff. And that's clearly home playoff too. Yes, yes. Uh, and honestly, like, that's probably more than we'll, than what we'll need, is my, is my guess. It's probably more than what we'll get. But like that's a great start. It yes. puts us in a really good position to then get the the you know the guys like truly bedded in to get a second preseason to get Jude here and to really start to, and, and get Minjay like up in speed and get John Antoine into the into the flow. Yeah, that's huge. It is. All right. Uh, second thing. Oh yes, I, yep. I almost. I said, uh, you're done. One thing. No, keep going. Uh, second thing is this this stretch of preseason uh, of second preseason. Now, sorry. <laughs> we trust the rod says so much. We're not even including the first three regular season games <laughs> as as season. They're just preseason, just extended preseason. The second preseason for us is is, is really really huge because we've been able to get points. This is the points one and two are kind of similar here, but. We've been able to get points, not necessarily being who we want to be. Like it's been very much, you know, you focus on the rod sess and all these other positions, and you play Ethan Corn up top because, like, you know, whatever because he's, he's available. But like, I think in 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 a maybe a last year team, you maybe you play Taylor Gray up top because like you want your you want your offensive players to do certain things. But very clearly in this in this opening stretch, we we couldn't we didn't have any wingers either. <laughs> kind of true. We played a left back at right wing. Don't forget. But like, you play Ethan Corn up top, and you say like run around, like do your do you, do the running job there, and let all these other positions like start to really get, like f- try to flow together, and let that last piece come. Now is the chance where all these pieces get to come together. Yes. To get the the time they need, and. It's also an opportunity for, say, the you know for all all facets of the club. So this big break now, two and a half weeks, good chance for the men's first team to to get in the flow and and, and really get get ready to go. It's a good opportunity for the front office to to double down again without the stress of of games. Uh, in this next stretch, to really double down and you know sell some more tickets, like sell some more partnerships, do do what they need to do. It's also a great opportunity for. Uh, for everybody to start getting excited for the women's team coming in. We just had our first new player announcement uh, in Billie yeah. Jean Davies. Yes, we did. Uh, who I, I believe is a left back. We also had nine returning players announced. Um, uh, Anna Lanter, Summer Hernandez. Did Anna Lanter get married? I think so. Okay. Anna I'm Lanter, Sum- not, Summer Hernandez. We'll, I apologize we'll for not. Um, I'm, I'm like 80% sure she did. Uh uh, who else? Uh, Avery Catlett is back, uh, which is a nice surprise. I did, I did not I know. did not know that was going to happen. Avery, Avery Ingles, Ingles is back. back. Brooke Alvarez is back, the goalkeeper. Uh, Bailey, Bailey Dull is back. Uh, Nadia Ivanchenko is back. Very good news. Um, and there was one more in midfield. Uh, Sage Samalai is back as well. That's only eight returners. Shit. Did you say Ava Van Doren? I did not say Ava Van Doren. She was listed as a defender, and that's just a crime. No, nope, she was listed as a forward. <laughs> so you might have listed her as a defender. And, and no, no, fair, no, the club listed her as a defender. Not on the not on Instagram. We're gonna we're gonna blame uh, we're gonna blame Alex. 
Um, on Instagram, she's definitely a forward. Uh, I saw I saw the announcement, and it's it's, it's in the art. It's in the article when they list by position. Uh, well, that's a, also Ava Ventor did play a little bit of everything, including defender, <laughs> midfielder, and uh, yeah. and striker. So we're gonna give um, so we're up some to grace there. we're up to ten players announced. Uh, uh, the the word the word on the street is that lots more players are already signed. Uh, yeah, we're, I heard we're just the word. In the, like, and I heard the announcement words, window now. Thirty players or twenty nine players is like the the number I heard bouncing around at um, the chalk talk, and like they're like, yeah, we have a lot of players signed. Oh, how many? Oh, it's like twenty nine or thirty. What? Like that's a cra- now. I don't know if that was like locked in or they have like verbal agreements. I don't know like all the details on that. But that was several weeks ago. That's wild and awesome. Yeah. So hopefully this this stretch here of um, of 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 time between between men's games allows us to announce you know hopefully the rest of the the women's team to build excitement for the women's team. The women's schedule is now out. It came out uh, I think the Thursday before the Cincinnati game. I have uh, not even started planning my days, folks. Let me tell you something. I cannot wait. And actually, this will just be my my third key takeaway because fuck it. Uh, no double headers. Very good. Uh, there is there is a stretch where we go. Uh, it's gonna be so amazing. I think it's like Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Friday away, Saturday away, and then Sunday home or something like that. Or, or maybe it's away home home. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's two home, one away. I do not remember how it breaks down. It is not one. It is not one one one. It is like it's either two one. Or two, it must be away Friday, home Saturday, home Sunday. Um, but it's it, either way, it's it's home back to back, and then one of them's away. It's it's around June. Uh, Oof. Uh, it's away on a Friday. It's home on a Saturday. It's home on a Sunday. Okay, yeah. Uh, That's going to be a raucous weekend. Uh, I'm going to sound worse than I sound now. Um, allergies are murderous right now, um, and too much yelling. But I'm going to sound like we're going to try to podcast on Monday, and I'm like, oh my guys. <laughs> It's just that's what's gonna happen. I right also now. I also think that's the uh that sequence that Friday starts right after Copa America begins on the Thursday night. <laughs> so y'all get ready for some some summer of soccer. I might be gone on that Sunday, by the way. I think I leave on that Sunday. Is that the US game? So the game's on Monday, so maybe I'm gone Monday. I don't know. I have to go look at my I, I gotta hate, go look I at hate these your national team fandom so much. <laughs> I actually think the game's on Monday, so I think I'm fl- maybe flying out on Monday, not Sunday. Mercy. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, point being is, I cannot wait. I am super pumped yeah, for the women's season. It's going to be a blast. Point three is the women's season. Like Stuff is starting to roll now. Like Get ready. If you if you have a season pass, hopefully it's a club season pass. Uh, but if you just have the men's season pass, considering uh, consider calling the the front office and, and the ticketing team and seeing if you yep. get that graduated to a club season pass. Let's go. Uh it, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. Uh, it's it's a big year for the women's program. Uh, Tommy Salsa's first year in charge. Uh, Juan Hernandez returning as assistant coach. We we I mean and the goal the goal on this podcast is is that that team. It's time to no longer be mid table or bottom of the table. Um, like year three, we need to be we need to be up there. I'm not saying you have to, have to win the thing. Nashville rhythm is gonna be a problem, but like let's go let's let's go get it. Let's go get it done. To quote Tommy Salsa, let's knock Nashville off their perch. I love it. I said last time we needed to make the playoffs, whatever it looks like. We'll do a, a women's season preview here at some point. And hopefully we'll do a men's season preview before we get done with the uh, second preseason. But, um, yeah, I won't be calling for us to be in the top. I don't even know what playoffs look like. so doesn't matter. <laughs> whatever it is, we got to be there. Um, listeners, viewers, thank you for viewing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Matthew, thank you for joining me. Mix, thanks for being such a good boy. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. We and appreciate also that. like and subscribe on the other podcast appy things wherever you get your podcasts. Yes, yes, yes. And we will return. Uh, I, we don't know our schedule yet. We're working on it. But hopefully during this second off season, we'll get a few, maybe some player pods. Uh, I would like to do, like I said, a uh, deep dive on the roster and preview for the men's season. And we will uh, catch up with you guys soon. Peace.